Hello everyone and welcome to the OASP Disciple. In this video I'm going to show you solutions for two exercises of the TETCTF. The first one is the New Year bot. For this exercise they provide us with a URL and with the source code. If we open the URL we can ask things from the New Year bot and we will get these answers. So let's take a look at source code. If we take a look at source code, we can see that the flag is defined here. We have these lists from the responses the bot will give us. We have a bot validator function. And then here, it's where our request that we are sending on the application you saw earlier is getting processed. We can see that we can also pass a debug parameter that will enable this functionality here. And we can see the server is using this eval function with the supply of parameters. We can see there are some validations being performed here on the parameters we are sending to the server. So let's try to find a way to bypass them. Let's focus on this eval here. We are making this evaluation with the two supplied parameters and we can try to extract information from the flag variable this way. In Python, we can treat a string like an array of characters. So if we ask for the first character, it will be returned. So let's send the request to the server like this. First parameter will be the flag variable, and then the zero will be the first character of the flag. We can also turn the debug parameter on. That will enable the greeting to be appended first, what we are sending as greet type, and then the length of that evaluation. Here we can see that we are evaluating flag. The first character of the flag is T and then it has 24 quotes or in this case characters. After this we can try to get all of the other characters of the flag. For example like this. We can try to retrieve the second one and we get it. It's an E. Then the third one and it's a T. The fourth one it's a C. The fifth one, it's a T. The sixth one is an F. And then when we try to get the seventh one, we get this. So we are eating some kind of validation that's being performed by the server. Let's take a look at it. We have to take into account two main validations. First, this string that's getting evaluated cannot be bigger than 20 characters and they are adding two characters apart from what we are supplying so the sum of our two parameters cannot exceed 18 characters then the bot validation so let's see what's being performed on the bot validation which is our second parameter we can see that our second parameter only accepts numbers but it's not really like that. We can see that it goes from 57 to 123 in ASCII. We can check the ASCII table 57. So from 9 forward and then to 123, which is letter Z. So from here to here, we are not allowed to use these characters. All the others are fine. Then whatever number we supply, it will join all the digits that we supply in that string. And then for all of the digits, it will evaluate it against the maximum of the length of all the dictionaries the bot has. And our digits glued up together cannot be bigger than the maximum number of items of the biggest dictionary. So this is the reason why we cannot go above 5. If we go above 5, we will hit this restriction and then this function will return false. So the digits of our string glued together cannot be bigger than 5. And somehow with this restriction, we have to get the rest of the characters from the flag. To bypass this validation, I used a Python bitwise operator, in this case the not, which inverts all the bits. 
if we try it in the Python interpreter, the not zero, it will become minus one. And with this technique and using also the minus character, I was able to produce all the payloads necessary to get all of the characters from the flag, like this. And as we can see, the minus is the 45, which does not hit the, the restriction. And then this character is the 126, which also does not hit the restriction. Let's take this technique, which is allowing us to pass different numbers above five to get the rest of the characters from the flag. So to get character number six, we do like this, seven, eight, and so on, and so on, until we get all of the characters from the flag. And once we do, we can just submit it, and there it is. Now let's take a look at the image service viewer exercise. For this exercise, we also get the URL for the web application and the source code of the application. If we take a look at the application, we can see we can perform a request. And if we send an A, for example, we get this and we see that we should send a URL. Let's take a look at the source code of the application. By looking at the Docker file, we can already see where the flag is located on the server. We have to find a way to get it. Then on the index, we see a lot of modules being used. And then if we go below, we can see that the request we are making is opposed to API get image. And then there are a couple of things we must bypass. The server is running the is admin to validate and then is valid protocol is valid host and only then it will pass to the download image part so first let's take a look at the is admin in the is admin we have to bypass this restriction we have to send a password that is 13 characters long but the length of it cannot be bigger than 12 how can we do this? In this case, we are going to take advantage of how the comparison works in Node.js. If we compare an array with a string with that string, Node.js will return true. So this is exactly what we are going to do. Here, when sending the request to the server, we will send the password as an array and then the content as the item of that array and this will bypass this validation then the next one it will validate if what we are providing is a string or a number and if the body contains any of these items then it will check if it is a valid protocol and we can see we have to provide http or https and then it will check if it is a valid host and here on the valid host, we can see that we have to specify this host. If we get all of these validations to pass, the server will run this function download image. The function download image will run a Python file called bot.py with the URL that we provided. The bot.py starts with a local file adapter mentioning the file protocol. So this already tells us a clue of what we might need to do in order to get the flag from the server. Then if we take a closer look to what this bot is doing, we can see that he's making a check and the URL has to end with any of these extensions. And then it will perform an add request that has to have image in the content type header and then it will make a GET request to the URL that we specified. So how can we take advantage of this to get the flag? The first thing we can do is to run npm audit to see if any package is vulnerable. After we examine these results, we see there is an open redirect in URL parse, which hopefully will allow us 
to exploit a server-side request forgery vulnerability to give us the flag. Let's take a look at this vulnerability. This is the GitHub advisory. Here I've opened the Hacker One report, and then from the Hacker One report, I've opened the GitHub commit from the patch. And then on the patch, we can see a test that was made to make sure that the vulnerability was fixed. So we can start with this payload to try and make a server-side request forgery from a server that we control. Let's try to do it with Burp Collaborator. So here in this case, I have a Burp Collaborator payload and I'm sending the host that the validation is expecting. Also, I'm ending the URL with the allowed extension. If we send it and then if we check our collaborator, we see that the request was made from the Python bot to our Burp Collaborator. If you don't have Burp Collaborator, you can also use webhook.site. I will leave the links in the description. Great, so now we have a way to make requests from the server and retrieve that information. The next step is to exfiltrate the flag file. To get the flag file, we need to bypass these validations somehow. So we need to control the headers of the URL that we are requesting. In order to do that, we can make our own server using Flask, for example. With Flask, we can make a server to make a request to and modify the headers at our will. In this case, I made a small Flask application that in case it receives a head request, it will respond with a contatype image, which is the check the server is making. And then if it's on any other type of request, it will make a redirection to file and then the path of the flag file on the server. This allows us to bypass the image content type restriction on the add request. And then when the server is going to make the get request, it will be redirected to request the flag file and it will send it to us. Base64 encoded. In order to run this server and expose it to the world, I will use the local tunnel npm module that can expose a port where you are running your server in your local machine to the external world. I will run the server on my local machine and then I will expose it to the world. After we expose it to the world using the tunnel npm module, we can copy paste this URL to our payload. So then the server will communicate with our application that is running locally on our machine. And once we do that, first the server will perform a head, it will retrieve the content type image, it will bypass it, and then we will force a redirection when it makes this get to get the flag file in base64 encoding. Then here we can just decode the base64 we received and we can see we got the flag. Thank you for watching, leave a like and subscribe and see you on the next one.